in a little bit too. Come in, come in. I think they're trying not to blast the camera. <laughs> Cameras, is it okay if folks come in here a little bit? Uh, We've, <laughs> all right, uh, squeeze in a little more. <laughs> um, okay, we'll go fast then and then we can go back to mingling. Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today with so many community leaders, friends, activists, and fierce believers in the power and opportunity that our land presents to us. Uh, we are standing here at the Fowler Clark Epstein Farm, uh, an important part of Boston's legacy. Yeah. You'll hear from those stewarding this farm directly in a little bit, but this is land that had sat unused with just weeds growing out for 75 years, one of the oldest farmhouses in Boston. And for a long time, we saw it just waiting for someone to notice. And seven years ago, rather than demolish the structure and wipe out this legacy, community leaders, community members, residents came together to build something truly special. And because of that community-led effort, because of that investment back into our legacy, into our future, we see this farm producing food, nourishing the residents of Mattapan, Dorchester, and the city of Boston, and creating jobs and training along the way. And so I want to thank our hosts here today for making sure that that legacy continues yeah. to grow and Boston's back to our roots there. Uh, there are many who have been involved with this effort, and I just want to list a few of the folks who have been instrumental, some of whom you will hear from as well. Um, Chief Sheila Dillon, Chief and Reverend Mariama Whitehammond, Shawnee Fletcher, you'll hear from, as well as Director of Grow Boston, Rep Holmes, I'll invite up in a bit, uh, Michelle DeLima from the Trustees of Reservations, Hay and Kim, our Deputy Director of our new Office of Food Justice, Kathy Cotteridis, Executive Director of Historic Boston, Tali Robbins, our Deputy Chief of Policy, Pat Spence, of course, President and CEO of the Urban Farming Institute, Kanan Thiruvengadam, President of Easty Farm, members of the Grow Boston Advisory Board, who are uh, some of whom are here today, and many of our community food security partners. Let's give them all a hand. <laughs> Sorry about that. And so in that same spirit of revitalization, returning to our roots, and lifting up the power of food to make a difference in each one of our lives, today we are announcing the creation of our new Office of Food Justice for the City of Boston. <laughs> this office will draw on the work that has been underway in Boston for many years and transform what has already been happening through the leadership of our previous Office of Food Access focused on hunger and nutrition to bring together all the ways in which food security, economic development, climate justice are all deeply intertwined. And in that vein, this office will live under the leadership of Chief Mariama Whitehammond and connecting the, the importance of our food systems and food economies to climate justice. This office will work very closely with our Grow Boston Office of Urban Agriculture, which will be headed by Shawnee Fletcher. <laughs> Urban agriculture has been a focus area of the city for a few years now, and we've seen some zoning changes. We've seen a return to the uh, potential with neighborhood plots and parcels and connecting that to the opportunity for community stabilization, for economic security, food security, uplifting the power of our roots and of our of our land to to do good by the entire community so under Shawnee's leadership and within the cabinet that chief Sheila Dillon runs of the mayor's office of housing we will see working hand in hand resources made available to our urban farmers through seed sharing tool sharing we will see technical assistance and we'll see a great focus on how we can connect our farmers markets across the city, the jobs, the, the nourishment that that provides with the opportunities at each one of our urban farms uh, and counting in Boston. The Office of Food Justice will also be responsible for really tapping into the power of the purse strings and how we can change our entire food systems with how we procure food. So this office will be char charged with implementation of the Good Food Purchasing Program 
an initiative that Boston opted into a few years ago with a city council ordinance that led the way and put Boston on the map as the first city on the East Coast to participate in thinking about all the different ways in which food affects our outcomes and closes gaps in communities. That when we purchase food, we have to make sure that every single dollar is also going to creating good jobs, to nourishing our environment, to tracking and being monitoring animal welfare, and to ensuring that whether it's lunches served in Boston Public Schools or meals provided to seniors through our Age Strong programming, we are making good and putting our money where our mouth is in ensuring that our dollars for food are going to change the entire ecosystem. We've also been looking to partner with the many, many large institutions in Boston who are also serving thousands, hundreds of thousands of meals every year. Imagine if each one of our hospitals and universities serving their patients, faculty, students, joined together with the City of Boston to think about how we can source collectively the healthiest farm-produced Massachusetts apples, <laughs> the jobs right here in Mattapan to produce that, that produce. We know what's possible and that food is a way that we can touch and intertwine each one of our collective futures. So I'm incredibly excited that these two offices will work together to strengthen our local food system, mitigate the effects of the climate crisis, and ensure equitable access to healthy food in Boston. Uh, before I pass it on to Pat Spence, um, un poco en español, hoy estamos um, aquí en una de las gran una de las granjas más viejas en Boston, uh, Fowler Clark Epstein Farm, um, y hace siete años regresó a sus raíces con la colaboración de miembros de la comunidad, líderes en la comunidad y un, un, en la confianza de la poder el poder de uh, producción en ag agricultura ur urbana. Con el mismo el espíritu de re revitalización, me da orgullo anunciar la Oficina de Justicia Alimentaria. Uh, esta, esta oficina está dentro del Gabinete del Medio ambi ambi Ambiente, en el liderazgo de Chief Mariama Whitehaman, y también una oficina de Grow Boston, de agricultura de la ciudad dentro del gabinete de vivienda. La oficina de justicia alimentaria será responsable por mejorar la calidad de comida en nuestras escuelas y promover la reforma a través de instituciones como las universidades locales también. Estamos muy contentos de que estas oficinas trabajen juntas para fortalecer nuestro sistema alimentario local, mitigar los efectos de la crisis climática y garantizar un acceso equitativo a los alimentos saludables en Boston. Entonces, gracias por todos los colaboradores. Um, and now I will turn it over to Pat Spence, President and CEO of the Urban Farming Institute. Thank you. I just want to say to Mayor Wu first, all of the farmers here in the audience, our board and staff of UFI, we are loving this announcement. And we are loving your support because your support did not start today. I remember you behind the Sportsman's Tennis Club, one of our sites, along with other uh, folks about probably three or four years ago. You've been here for us for a very long time, and we appreciate the commitment. So I just wanted to say that first. Thank you. And thank you all for thank you all for coming today. And again, thank you, Mayor Wu, for joining us at the historic Fowler Clark. Epstein Farm in beautiful Mattapan. Yeah. <laughs> and for your sheer enthusiasm and ongoing support of our urban agriculture, all that we're doing in urban agriculture, and to ensure that every single elder, child, veteran, family, teenager, single parent, and multi-generational home has breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Because that's what we're doing here, food justice. The Urban Farming Institute is here to do its part as well by growing as much food as possible over our four farm sites, by expanding our urban farmer workforce training program celebrating its 10th anniversary, 
and increasing our educational programming so that we can get into more Boston public schools. We can help families build more raised beds to grow their own food so that we can teach our neighbors how to grow it collard greens, kale, callaloo, herbs, so that the children will be excited about growing food, so that children will know that a carrot comes out of the ground and not a frozen bag called bird's eye. <laughs> That's what we're here to do. We at UFI are here like you, and we're here for the long run to expand urban farming and urban farmland with our partner. I think Boston Farms Community Land Trust is in the house. Uh, yeah. And to ultimately, with our partner, Historic Boston, who's also here today, to help us all work to purchase this actual very farmland and property that we're on today. That is our goal right now. And to ensure that our farmers today, our future farmers and neighbors will always have a home base here to learn how to grow, to grow, and to spread the wisdom of healthy eating and healthy, healthy living in Mattapan. Our motto is we don't just grow food, we grow people. And hey, maybe we can get 25 farms by 2025. How about that? <laughs> Thank you again. We appreciate you, and we appreciate your family as well. Thank you so much for being here today. We love the announcement. Next up, represent State Representative Russell Holmes. Thank you, Mayor. I, too, just want to begin by just simply saying it is even on a cold day, it's so great to see the community. And when I say the community, it's the farming community. I can say that um, when I think of just this food justice argument, I think of Vivian. I wanted to make sure I still, oh, she is here, make, make sure I recognize uh, what's been happening for just decades. And this here is just the materialization of that today when you think about the mm -hmm. office being set up. It has been an awful lot of just uh, on the ground hard work that now materializes into what we do today. So let's give Mattapan Food and Fitness and all of those Greater Mattapan Neighborhood Council, all of the folks who've been working hard. Also want to just give a shout out to Carl and Annette Beatty. I mean, they, they've just been in the fight for so long. Um, just so important. And then one last shout out before I just simply just say a few words, and that is around the effort around the uh, Dorchester Co-op. I mean, use the food co-op. Let us think about where we're heading. We're heading for that vision that I can remember the first time I had some of these conversations about the importance of growing food locally. The, the thing that has always stuck out most to me is when I think about Pat says about bird's eye. For so many of us, that is where we think about where we get our vegetables. We go to, this, to the grocery store. But the thing that I love the most when I see people advocating for why we should do this in the neighborhood is that little illustration that they show very often, or that you show so often, where that food one day leaves from being picked out of the ground and the next day is here at the farm stand. And you illustrate that very different than what's picked in California, put on a truck, gets here, and then you see that's two weeks later, that the food has probably been sitting and being transported for two weeks versus sometimes two hours. And so when we're thinking about this farm and all the 25 goals for, for now over the next, hopefully by 2025, now I have a new goal to try to figure out that I didn't know before I came up here. But um, when we're thinking about that, it should be all through this, this uh, what many people call a food desert. And so when Pat and I were talking last night, I, I literally said to Pat, uh, I can drive over to Glenway and Harold Street and go look at all of them right now and make sure nothing's literally happening at this moment because of the fact that we want, come April, all of these uh, farms to be producing and to get these, f these uh, stands up and running. So my only request just to everyone is stay committed to the effort. Stay committed to these fundraising goals. Pat's not here just saying that she needs help just on this. She needs a capital campaign to be funded so that this place is paid for in perpetuity. Yes? Yeah. Let's clap to that. Let's get some money to this place. That's the type of things that we need to do to make sure that we can grow this and, and we can build on this. And so thank you all for coming out today. And I think I'm going to bounce to Mariama or to Shani. How, who am I? All right. I think it's Shani. All right, Shani. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you, Rep. Holmes. Thank you, Mayor Wu. <clears throat> um, and thank you also to the Urban Farming Institute for hosting us today. <laughs> um, I'm thrilled and honored to be the director of Grow Boston, Boston's first office of urban agriculture. And I'm so happy and proud to be working for the city in an administration, administration so deeply committed to climate action and food justice. 
Uh, Boston has a rich history of urban food production, as uh, some folks have already mentioned. And in particular, over the, the last decade or so, we've seen tremendous momentum in urban farming, food forests, school gardens, and rooftop and indoor growing. Mayor's Office of Housing, led by Chief Sheila Dillon, has been investing in urban agriculture of all kinds for over 25 years. The Grassroots Open Space Program has made possible the establishment of over 60 acres of open space, primarily gardens, farms, and food forests in the city of Boston. With expertise in land use, open space development, and community engagement, MOH has been a critical partner for the urban agriculture community of Boston. And the establishment of Grow Boston creates an exciting opportunity to continue that work while increasing food production through new investments in innovation, development of educational resources, and deep collaboration with the newly named Office of Food Justice and the Environment, Energy, and Open Space Cabinet, as well as many other public agencies. Um, I would like to thank uh, Sheila Dillon in particular for her longtime support of urban agriculture and her role in the establishment of this new office. <laughs> I'd also like to take a quick moment and thank my parents, who are right behind her. <laughs> uh, they were avid gardeners in my youth and um, forced me to eat snap beans and frozen beets, and I hated it, and I thought it was boring, and uh, years later it became my passion and my life's work, so thank you to them for that. <laughs> um, I've been working in this field for over a decade and have had the pleasure of knowing so many of Boston's incredible food producers as a fellow farmer and a community gardener, and now in my role with the city. And there are many folks here today, so I'm going to rattle off a few of the many advocates that we have in the city of Boston. I'd like to thank Urban Farming Institute, Trustees of Reservations, Easty Farm, Haley House's Thornton Street Farm, Oasis on Bellu, Boston Farms Community Land Trust, RBG Farm and Retreat, Boston Food Forest Coalition, We Grow Microgreens, Charlestown Sprouts, and BMC Rooftop Farm. And I saw the Food Project, and I think also maybe Farmers Collaborative. Um, they are all, re oh, and Nubia, <laughs> they're all represented here and the many other farmers and gardeners and stewards and advocates and partner organizations who are helping to build a more vibrant urban agriculture sector and food justice movement. This is a really exciting time and I'm looking forward to collaborating with all of you with our Grow Boston Advisory Board. Um, let's see who's here. Vivian Morris is a member of our new board. Apollo Catala and Barbara Connect. <laughs> Three of our founding members. Um, and my city colleagues to grow more food in Boston. So thank you very much. Now, pa now pass it over to Michelle de Lima of Trustees of Reservations. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Michelle de Lima. I run programming for the Trustees Network of 56 Community Gardens in Boston. And we at the Trustees, and before that, um, Boston Natural Areas Network have been working on community gardens in Boston since the 1970s. Throughout that time, we've really appreciated the enthusiastic support of the city of Boston. And now, as we're expanding our food access and open space work to include Boston's waterfront and our own mobile market, we're really thrilled to see this partnership with the city continue to deepen. The launch of Grow Boston and the Office of Food Justice represent a significant expansion of the resources the city will provide to gardens, gardeners, and urban farms, and we here all know how important that is to building a greener, healthier, and more resilient city. So on behalf of all of Boston's community and home gardeners, I just want to offer our sincere appreciation for this administration's new investments in food justice and in open space in Boston. Thank you, Mayor Wu. Thank you, Shawnee. Thank you, Chief White Hammond. Thank you, Chief Dillon, and all of the amazing partners that Shawnee just rattled off, so I don't have to. Um, but we are really, I am honored to collaborate with all of you, and I hope to see you all at the Gardener's Gathering on March 26th. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know who I'm passing up. Next up, Kanan Thirvengadam of EC Farm. Thank you, Mayor Wu. Nice to see everyone. My name is Kanan. I'm the director of EC Farm, and I come from a land far, far away. It's across the Atlantic from here, called East Boston. <laughs> but it, it's great to be here. Um, I'm sort of a newcomer to the farming community as well as the activist community, but I've learned a lot from people who have already been in this space, fighting the good fight and doing amazing, so many amazing things. And every time I get a little nervous about how do you run an organization and uh, how, wh what is the board and what is supposed to, what are they supposed to do? I call Pat. <laughs> uh, 
And she's so good. She just answers the phone, then send me, oh, take this document and take this one too. This is going to be. So I, I really um, appreciate having this amazing community to stand on the shoulders of and, and make a little difference of my own in, in my own community. Um, I feel like we're at a good time here in the city because I, I think the people who get it are also in the position to make it happen. And it started with Shani getting into D&D &D and, and, uh, and, and um, Reverend Mariama, Chief White Hammond, um, being tapped by Mayor Jenny to head EOS, and now Mayor Wu being in that place. Um, it, it, this, I get a little emotional because I've been waiting for something like this and it's happening. And Mayor Wu, even as councillor, has been helpful to a little organization like Easty Farm. It, when COVID happened and we raised some funds to help folks and we worked with organizations like Tawakal, Yahaya is here, and bond me to, to make food at, at cost and bring to people who, were, who didn't have access to food because they couldn't go to work, couldn't make ends meet, couldn't pay rent, didn't have food. So when we were trying to help them, I reached out to uh, Mayor Wu and Councillor Wu, immediately got a response saying, here are the organizations to connect with because they know the families that are hard to reach. And we got connected to BCNC in Chinatown that way and within a week we were in operation bringing them food on a regular basis. And not only that, you know, even something like the good food purchasing policy, which not all of us are aware of, but it's, it brings together local economy, labor, and environment, and good food. So it's healthy for us, healthy for the community, and healthy for the planet. So doing something like that, it, it, it's its own little GND, Green New Deal, if you will. So I, I appreciate all of those initiatives really a lot. I, I could go on and on, but I'll, I'll say, uh, with, with EC Farm, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, we are doing many little programs of our own. Uh, during COVID, it was amazing to have the help of OFA. Shannon's here, Hayen's here, and I think I saw Catalina as well, and Magda. They've all been such great partners in making food security happen. It's a process, it's still happening, but without people in the city helping us, it's very, very hard to make it happen. So in all ways they could, they've been there and helping us, really appreciate that. So we're still carrying that on with their food sovereignty program, doing raised beds in schools and in people's homes, as well as doing um, CSA work. And we're bringing um, free CSA boxes to Roxbury and Dorchester as well through OFA's programs and grants. And currently we're um, executing some of the other grants that they've made possible, the community grants, and there's equity, food equity work, which is again CSA and other types of fresh produce to people who don't have access to fresh produce. And you all know how expensive it can be if you want to buy local fresh organic food. And if you don't have the money, then you're going to buy cheap crappy stuff. No. So, but, the, but to change that, this, this is very helpful. And there's also a destigmatization grant that they made available, and we, we're doing that. And we also understand that there's stigma associated with accessing food aid. And we're combating that by saying, hey, food is for everyone. It's for all entire community. And if you have disposable income, then pay a market rate for the CSA. But if you don't, you just come pick up the CSA box. And when you come to the farm, you'll see a box with your name on it, and nobody knows what your income level is or anything. You just come pick up your box and go. So that just gets the stigma out of the way. And so we're able to do all this because of the support from a city like this and from, from an administration like this. Maybe, a, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say thank you. And we do an education program. It, it's called Nature, Nature as Teacher for Urban Resiliency Education. I'd like people to learn more about that because we'd like to do more of that in many schools. We're currently doing that in East Boston in several schools where we're also building our school gardens. And uh, we're now building a, a greenhouse which will be powered by geothermal energy. And the funding comes from the state and the city and local organizations. And the geothermal energy is going to keep it warm in the winter so the plants can stay alive and we can have community activities and, and um, have fun and do education and all that. We don't have to be cut off from the school kids during winter. We can have them in the winter as well. But the geothermal energy, because it provides this constant 
kind of temperature from below ground. We're going down about 455 feet. It's going to be also making our summers cool. So in terms of dealing with climate resiliency, when we have more and more urban heat island being exacerbated because of increasing heat, people can come to this greenhouse and cool off. So we're trying to do all this work. So it's, just, it's, it's great to um, be in that space and, and have this kind of support with Shani, Chief White Hammond, and Mayor Wu, and everybody else here. So welcome to visit EC Farm and get involved in our programs. Thank you very much. Next up, Chief Mariama White Hammond. So I, um, the mayor is surprised. I always am color, color coordinated. So today is Black History Month. And so I begin by saying Habadagani, which means what's the news? And today we have really good news and an opportunity to celebrate, um, as Conan said, something that has been coming to fruition over years. Um, I know this property well. <laughs> the last time I was here, um, was this fall, I, I also am an owner, a uh, part owner of a black owned cooperative farm in New Hampshire and we did our retreat here. We've gotten so much training and support from this community as we've tried to figure out how to make um, our farm grow. And, and the, really the beacon of light this is in this neighborhood. Um, the reminder um, that, that we do come, many of us from agricultural paths that in some instances we, think, we thought we had to leave behind to move up. But in the reality is that many of us have lost an important part of our history and our culture and our legacy. And so this work is not just about um, building an economy, which just means manage, management of home. Economy means management of home and household. And, and we really want to get to the point where the way our food system works is really in alignment with the best of what our households need and what our communities need. And I, I'm really grateful because I know so many of you, um, because over time we've been building a movement of eaters and growers to come together. Because everybody is an eater, and I don't say a movement of consumers. I say movement of eaters. Because it's not, it doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have, we all need to eat. And if we could build our food system to be in alignment with that way of thinking, it would be a radical change. So as people have said, I'm already, I am Reverend Mariam Away Hammond, and, and I'm really grateful also, my office also does historic preservation, so we also leaned into the historic side of this space um, and the opportunity not to just throw away our history and throw up something new, but to keep and honor the legacies that have been built over time, and sometimes to have some deeper questions about where those legacies are and the things that we want to do differently from the past, but not to just um, erase the past. And so I'm really um, glad to be here because this, this announcement is really about shifting to a modality that quite frankly has already been moving, right? Mm -hmm. There's already been a focus on how we do this work with justice. Mm -hmm. And so the change of the name is about recognizing the change in our thinking about how we approach food. That if we can't get it right on the most basic human needs, how do we expect for there to be justice anywhere else in our society? So I'm really thankful. I want to just take a moment to introduce and acknowledge um, the team from the Office of Food Justice, Elisa Menander, Menander from the School of Food Insecurity Specialists, we also have Hayen Kim, who's the Deputy Director of Planning and Implementation. We have Magda Carr, who's our Program Manager and doing a lot of work around um, particularly our farmers markets. And Shannon Timlin, who is our Emergency Food Access Coordinator. And Shannon's been doing a lot, particularly during this pandemic. If you thought of food emergencies were a thing before, she's been uh, <laughs> living it um, during this time. And so really excited. Um, to just actually keep working with all of you. You are here as a reflection of the fact that this is a movement that's been building and growing. And so this is Mayor Wu just reorganizing the city a little bit to continue that movement and to continue making it possible for us to imagine new things. So, so thankful to be here. So thankful for this opportunity. Um, and I know a lot of us are in our seed season, right? I, yes just started putting my seeds out and getting them ready and 
clearing out the side of my house that turns into uh, our, our own little greenhouse. My husband's not exactly excited that my, lip, that my dining room becomes a greenhouse, <laughs> but he's gotten over it over time. Um, and so really thankful and looking forward to all the work we'll continue to do together. We'll take a, a question or two from the press. Hi, um, Mayor Wu, you, um, you are a small food business owner yourself. You, some of your first jobs in government were in food and food trucks. What does this day mean to you um, personally? And then the second part of that question is, um, how do you see Boston um, being a, a model for other cities and sort of this intermodality of, uh, you know, food access, food justice, being connected to things like housing and economic justice? Thanks for the question. So I'll answer the first fully. The second I'll touch on and then I hand it over to some folks I know will have really great answers. Um, I'm feeling quite emotional here today, too. I am remembering what it was like as a young girl the oldest kid in an immigrant family, and knowing that in the rhythms of my family's life, every weekend was set aside for the hour plus trip to the grocery store. Not the grocery, not because we did, we lived in a remote area, but it took an hour plus to get to that store that had the vegetables that and the spices that my parents felt were home, that had the prices they could afford and the types of food that we couldn't find anywhere else. And so that was, we listened to the Chinese radio on the way there, we'd do our grocery shopping, and it, it was necessary, basic, for my family to feel like that's how we could connect to our sense of being home. Food is so intrinsically part of our identities, our culture, our humanity, and the chance that Boston has to really keep building the movement that has been growing here is incredible. Uh, my first jobs, as you mentioned, were as a small restaurant owner, a tea shop owner, and navigating all the hurdles that it takes just to do something that brings together your community, brings some good into, into the neighborhood, um, and then working on the other side of that to try to clear aside some of the barriers for restaurant owners in Boston. About a decade ago, I first met Ms. Vivian Morris also. When I got to shadow her, she was at Boston Medical Center running the food pantry and making sure that this vision was lived out in every way, founding the Mattapan Food and Fitness Coalition, pushing for young people to be involved and leading the way in every conversation. And so I just, I'm, I'm just flooded with memories standing right here and knowing that this space has been home to so many stories of people finding their sense of self, home, and community here as well, and we'll continue to grow that. As far as what this office could mean, uh, Boston's already been leading the way across the country for what it means to be a Green New Deal city, for what it means to transform every aspect of our food systems. We have the chance to really show how community, workforce development, our, our intrinsic sense of self, um, and our climate future are all interconnected. So um, I'll pass it over to Shani or anyone from our, our team if you want to comment more on what this means and what the potential is for these offices to grow. I would just say briefly that, um, you know, we really want everyone to thrive, and it's really hard to thrive when you don't have your basic needs met, and um, food and housing are so essential to being able to live and to do anything else. You really need those to be solid and in place. So I think those are those, that's one way that they're so deeply interrelated. And also, um, food and climate work. Sometimes I know I had a, a, a moment when I was like, "Do I want to focus on food work or do I want to focus on climate work?" And they're so deeply interconnected. And it's really important that we think of them that way as we fight the climate crisis and um, and try to have food justice for all. Um, the, the last thing I would say is that. The, there's also uh, the connection of, of between housing and food that is just the use of land and how I think a lot of cities struggle with a perceived conflict between using land to have open space, to have food production, and to have housing. And there really doesn't have to be a conflict. Like, we can do both things. And I think that's something that we're, that we're really strong in and that I'm excited to, um, to, to keep working on together. 
So I'll just say we have a lot of planning and thinking to do. Um, the last few months have actually, you know, been, well, the last two years really have been um, heavily focused on meeting this moment. Uh, but some of what we've talked about the team is how do we look at the lessons that we've learned in this moment and decide um, which things we need to move forward. Um, I will say that before, um, immediately before coming into government, um, the core thing I was working on was food policy. And I think um, we need to do everything we need to do in the city of Boston to increase our food security. And we will never be able to grow all of our own food for the number of residents we have. And so we really need to look at a sort of statewide and, and maybe even sort of a New England-wide approach to really figuring out how do we transform our food system. So we're not gonna do all of that right away. I'm a big believer that you have to phase in, but I do, um, I'm blessed that immediately before being in this role, I was building with some folks in Lawrence and Springfield and Holyoke. And we wanna figure out how do we pay close attention to the needs of Boston, but also how do we um, expand our view to be in solidarity with other cities and other regions and rural areas um, where we are interconnected and we are intertwined, um, but we haven't always organized ourselves in a way that makes those connections readily apparent and builds the power that could be possible if we were in, in greater collaboration and conversation. So there's so much work to do, <laughs> and it is a small but mighty team. Um, but I do think over, you know, the, the mayor really has asked us to, to really look at what does it take to get to a Green New Deal and the level of um, intervention that has the opportunity to make a real difference. And so we will be looking at how do we go deep where we are, but also build more um, relationships and links to look at how we look at this as a statewide and regional issue um, to make sure everybody can eat um, healthy, uh, culturally appropriate food that is grown and pays people a living wage while also protecting our planet. And getting all of those right um, is possible, but it takes a level of intentionality. And so we'll go even deeper in our intentionality about how we pull all, all of those pieces together. Uh, I just, now that I keep hearing the word state, I just wanted to just say again. Um, <laughs> We believe here in the Commonwealth we should be number one essentially in everything. That's just our common belief. Uh, so whether it be education, housing, and being out, out front on all of this. And I can just say again, I go back to community. And I just thank all of even the folks. I think about Joe Roll, uh, Wool, who came up to me and said, hey, did you see my legislation? Did you see what I sent you yesterday on something? I'm like, I just got, got here. You sent me something last <laughs> night, right? But the advocacy that you guys have. And then I, someone else came up and said, hey, did you see that uh, something pass um, some committee and uh, we may have a, a possibility to lower some of the taxes on some of our small farms. And it's that incredible advocacy that you guys bring. And so even wherever you are, you bring that energy, just know that we stand always wanting to be number one and wanting to be first. And so continue to advocate the way you've been doing because we will make those uh, bold changes here in the Commonwealth to be a model for the entire country. Thanks. Thank you, Mary Lou, and thank everyone for um, for welcoming us today. Um, just want to say we're really excited to continue the work and build on the work of our partners and um, think about how our work can uh, meet all these needs that we're talking about. Um, so we're excited to continue, and uh, we hope to just, um, yeah, we hope to um, work towards this future of, of uh, environmental justice and racial justice and food justice all together. Thank you. Uh, okay, last one. <laughs> Two last ones and then we'll, we'll wrap. And will um, the DPS and other city food vendors be required to source food from uh, these urban farms? So in fact, the ordinance that was passed in 2019 already requires any food purchasing from the city of Boston to follow the six criteria around healthy, uh, preference for locally produced food, for healthy and nutritious food, fair labor standards along the food supply chain, humane animal welfare, welfare treatment, environmental sustainability, and then we became the first city in the country to add a sixth criteria to the five standard good food purchasing ones, which is racial justice and equity in how our vendors are chosen. And so that implementation is already underway. 
We are nearing the end of what was an 18-month period to do a full assessment of all of the ingredients served in BPS meals and, and other meals and um, coming up with an action plan for how we are going to both push our existing vendors uh, to do better along those, those criteria or to get new vendors uh, who can better reflect the potential and the power to grow locally here in Boston too. Sí, um, es más importante en este momento de crear un, un, un espacio de seguridad, de salud pública y la conexión entre todo lo, lo eh, es necesario para nuestras familias en Boston, especialmente familias inmigrantes, es conectada al concepto de justicia de alimentaria. Entonces, esas dos oficinas de um, agricultura en Boston y también de uh, justicia de alimentaria pueden crear lo, las oportunidades y el acceso a la comida que es uh, re, re, responsiva, uh, cult culturada y también um, conectada al, al poder de trabajo en esos, estas um, áreas y, y también el, um, seguridad de seguridad alimentaria también. Um, durante la pandemia, todos los lo que necesita, necesita um, a aumentar en, en Boston. Entonces, um, para la justicia racial, justicia económica, um, para el acceso eh, a, a, a la salud, es necesaria de, de transformar nuestros sistemas de producción, de uh, agricultura y acceso a, 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 para todas las comunidades. Y, y también tenemos un problema con, con tierra. Es bien difícil encontrar espacio para, para crecer y tenemos una, una oportunidad de um, crear más espacio que es disponible para la gente que son inmigrantes para que ellos puedan participar. Porque sabemos que hay un mercado de personas que quieren algunos tipos de, de comida que ahora es bien difícil encontrar. Y si podemos ayudar a la comunidad, hay una posibilidad primero a crear nuevo trabajo, no solamente como trabajadores, pero como cultivadores. Personas que pueden tener acceso a su propio espacio y también um, proveer a la gente, la comunidad cultural, que es a este punto difícil encontrar. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>